So, a uh, little introduction to swarm trapping here. I've been trapping for a few years by no means is my way the right way, it's just the way I do it. And I've had some, I'm pleased with the success I've had. I've caught probably 20 swarms in all, so uh, 12 of which was just last year. Uh, this is the design for my most common swarm trap, and it's pretty common. You see it all over the place. Uh, by the way, shout out to Mike Berry uh, from Berry's Best Honey, who I learned a lot of this from anyway. So uh, this, uh, and I just do a screw top because I have my cordless drill, and it screws on. It's This is only quarter inch plywood. I have others that are a little thicker. Let's just drop the screws in here. There we go. And so I like the screw top and I like this friction fit on the closure. So here's the entrance. And I put mouse guard in there too, which is basically half inch hardware cloth. And I know some people are gonna say shrews and small mice can fit through that, but all of mine with that hardware cloth haven't had a problem. Now in this one, this is the key to any swarm trap, old brown cone. This one has a little mold on it, which is fine. You don't have to be picky about it. There's some drone, some uh, some nurse bee comb, doesn't matter. Because when the swarm lands, the first thing they're going to do is they're loaded and they're going to unload into this comb and fill it up with nectar and resources, right? So that's in the middle of my swarm trap. Then next to that, I have frames with starter strips. The starter strips are sometimes waxed, these ones weren't. But this was a reload last season, so sometimes when I get to the reloads, I start running out of things and I wanna get one, because when I pull one down, I hang another trap in my location, because if it's a good location, it will often hit two, maybe three times. And then on the ends, which there's like bees in this one, so this was a reload where I took some comb with some, uh, oh, actually that might be, I don't know, that's wings, that's bees that were in there. This might have been a dead out frame or something with some dead bees in it that I just threw in there. So on the end I have just, usually I just do just blank frames, undrawn, and they will, uh, swarms are wax building machines. And one of the things when you get that swarm, take advantage of their wax building capabilities. So this, a few things that I learned as I was making these, uh, I added, it went back a lot after the first few years, I started adding ventilation holes, because a lot of times it's in the heat of uh, the heat of the beginning of June when it's really hot, and you're transporting them, and it's like any nuke, like when you're transporting a nuke, and you don't want them to get overheated. Some of the big swarms, I've had you know, 20, 25,000 bee swarms about, and uh, they can get overheated quickly. So the ventilation, and also you can hang them in spots. A lot of people say don't hang them in a honey spot or a sunny spot, but I've, I've hung them and been successful. Don't tell the energy company on telephone poles. And it worked, but I don't think it would work without the ventilation. Now this one over here is uh, a little different. So someone, one of my locations, Someone had uh, abandoned hives, and this lady wanted me to keep bees on her property. She said I could do whatever I want with the abandoned hives. And these were seven framers, like nuke boxes, seven frame nukes. And uh, so this one caught last year. So I reloaded it. You'll see how it's reloaded, kind of funny. And I opened it today. Hadn't opened it since I reloaded it, rehung it. And then when I, it didn't catch the second time, I just threw it in my garage. And it, it had had mice in it. I think it had probably had mice in it after I hung it the second time because it did not have the mesh. So this morning I, I made my hole a little bigger. I added mesh. I improved it. I also, there was a little mold in here. So like every year when I pull them down, I make my improvements. So I said, oh yeah, right here where I took two boxes and I joined them together, uh, the water could just flow here and into the box. I put a few beads of caulk around here on the outside, no big deal. And when I reloaded it, I was out a lot of brown comb. So this is, uh, this is a deep with, with honey frame that never really got much to it. 
But this one, same deal, even though it's seven, I always put the empty ones. Now in this case, the empty ones, and I'm sorry if it smells a little moldy, I hit everything with the heat gun this morning. A lot of people burn out the insides of their swarm traps. Uh, I heat gunned them. I've torched them before, but uh, I took an old uh, plastic foundation and I just cut it into strips and I used that as my starter strips on this one. And it was a used one, so it was like a brood comb, so, you know, the smellier, the better. And then same as before. Normally I would do uh, alternating every other with just a, a blank frame. But apparently I I already had uh, foundation. So I have like four with foundation in here. And uh, a few a few things other than the, the drawing comb. There's some people who just use drawing comb as their attractant in their swarm traps, but uh, I've got one for each of you. This is slum gum. Oh, cool. So yeah. for my solar wax melter, this is the stuff that's left after uh, it melts away. Yeah. And there's a little bit of wax in it. There's a little bit of comb in it. Yeah. It's, it smells a little like chocolate. Yeah. So that's you can rub that all over the inside on a hot sunny day or hit it with a hair dryer to soften it up some and just rub the daylights out of it. Uh, there shouldn't be any honey or uh, honey or pollen and honey or pollen is not good for swarm trapping. So you don't want any, any eatable resources, right? So you're just going to invite robbers. You might get a swarm after they rob it out, okay. but you know, they're probably going to be robbing it at the time the swarms are looking for. So yeah. it's, you know, Best practice to not. Uh... And you mentioned, and you mentioned that you're torching, torching the inside of the or heat gun. Are you like after wax moth eggs, or what? What you're trying to keep it from? I uh, know, no, because no, bees like to set up shop and burn out trees. Oh. So you're giving it the smell of, of fire. And I also, for this one, it was kind of moldy in there. I was trying to burn out the mold, but also you're, you melt some of the propolis and get it a little fresher smelling. If you have ever noticed when you're rendering wax, every bee in the neighborhood comes around you. So this is a barn ale. I do have one for each of you. Uh, so if you make this type, the key, one thing I learned is the size of the hole. You don't want to make it too small. So uh, I make it pretty pretty big now. At first they were small, I went back and I drilled all of them. You can use a barn nail on a, on a tree and that works on your own property if you don't mind having a barn nail in your tree. Thank you. Barn nail. Okay, sure. Oh. Uh, but I make these now. I, at my own house I have a few nails and things, especially the telephone poles, they're nice. But uh, these brackets here, uh, this bracket is really cheap to make. I bought at uh, just Home Depot a piece of flat steel. I cut it with the grinder. I have a little welder, so and I welded a uh, at an angle, uh, just a bolt with a thread. And that thread actually works good too. So it grabs the swarm trap from behind like this. And then I order these straps. I have enough for all of my traps, and they come in like five packs on Amazon. But uh, I, stra I climb up, no. Well, the next next part we talk about is how how you set the trap and where you set it. But uh, the strap makes you a good neighbor to the people who let you trap. Sure. I usually say to people, well, I either do one of two deals. I say, I can give you a bottle of mead to let me set up a trap if it looks like a good location. If it's not a good location, I'll say, we'll see what we get. But otherwise, I say, I'll give you a bottle of mead if you let me set up a trap or a bottle of honey if I catch a swarm. Right. So uh, that way, if you catch a swarm, it's a good deal for them and a good deal for you. It doesn't go into their soffits. So before you set the trap, uh, this is lemongrass oil. A lot of people use lemongrass oil. I've tried lemongrass oil and some people swear by it. I don't use it so much. I do use a little bit like so I'll put lemongrass oil on a washcloth and sometimes rub the inside to clean it like from the year before. So like this one with the mold, I scrubbed it a little bit with a, an old sock with lemongrass oil on it, you know. Uh, these are Swarm Commander products. Now this is the Super Lure. Well, and the side is split out, which is kind of disappointing. But uh, I bought two of these this year. I like these because I notice a lot of times when I pull down a trap, I don't even remember which one I, which way I did it. And the ones with this, I cut this four ways. 
So I make four lures in there and I also use the spray. So, so I put this, I nail it in like a roofing nail down here near the bottom on the back side of the, of the trap, just a quarter of it. And when I go to dump out that swarm, I'm like, oh, there's another swarm lure. So this thing oh. is really good if you want yeah. to smell it. It smells oh. like lemongrass oil. It does, yeah. <clears throat> and then Swarm Commander, it's pricey. It's $30 for this little two ounce spray, but the, it's like not even half empty from last year. So when I'm using just the Swarm Commander, I spray one or two sprays on the underside of the lid, and then I kind of back up a little bit maybe a foot away and I spray towards the entrance too much and it'll freak them out a little bit. So uh, too much, they won't, they won't land. And I've had them, uh, the swarm land and hang on the bottom of the trap before. And that was probably my fault with the amount of uh, thing. I did catch it, but, but it was uh, a lot harder than a swarm that's in the trap. So are you saying these are reusable? Uh, well, that last, see that that's the problem, refreshing the trap. So, here is the, the best practice. I ran a lot of traps, so I, I only refreshed once throughout the year. So I set them out, and then right before what I consider to be the best time of the year, I went and I started refreshing all my traps. And, uh, but if you're using anything but that super lure, they say every 10 days. So, and, and it's not a bad practice, because every time I pull down traps, the ones that didn't catch are full of earwigs, full of ants, yeah. uh, that one with the mouse in it. You know, like if I would have been checking that every 10 days, pulling it down, that would have made a difference. So, how do we hang them? Last year I ran traps in 24 different locations. It was a lot to set up traps because some of them were out there. Like Eric's house, you saw Eric's house. That's just because he's my friend and I go out there occasionally. and. And I had uh, um, other friends in that neighborhood that I set out. But normally I like to keep them uh, not too crazy. But uh, I always bring with me, I have a foldable ladder. They say like the ideal height is like 15 feet up in the air. And so I have this fold out ladder and uh, it extends it. It's like a, like a, what do you call it? The giant, my giant or whatever. And uh, I bring that with me and I hang them high, but there's a lot of people who do it at eye level. And they're like, I don't climb trees, and I, I, yeah. but I don't <laughs> have any problem climbing trees, so I go high. And uh, so I don't know which is better, that's just what I do. But uh, I usually, I look for the edges of things, right? So I don't want them in the middle of a piece of woods, that's gonna be tough for them to locate on the edge of woods and field or on the, you know, uh, on the edge of something, not located in the middle of something, right? So if you're in a yard with trees evenly spaced, towards the edge of it might be better than in the middle of it. Uh, water source, I, you know, I've had some luck, you know, near ponds and stuff, bees will come to the pond, you know, for water. So, uh, so I hang them usually, usually facing east, southeast, but I've hung them in all directions and I've caught in all directions. Sometimes you get to someone's house and you're like the only decent tree that, you know, like is on the edge of something, faces the wrong way and you're like, oh, I'll try it and it works, you know? So, so don't feel like you might, you, you know, the tree might be in the middle of their yard and you're like, oh, it's not on the edge of anything. You know, like bees will find with the scent, they'll find it. The, the key is you want to make your trap uh, attractive, right? So, uh, when I come back, someone, I hang them at people I know's houses and they send me pictures or send me videos if they have something. And a lot of times they don't know, I'll show you at the end because I'm <laughs> controlling the recording with this phone, but I'll show you videos of some traps, but uh, they don't, they'll send me a video. I don't know if we have it yet or not. And I've been fooled too. It's easy to get fooled by that. The, one thing that people say is look for pollen because they won't be bringing pollen into a location that's not their new home, right? So, but I don't usually wait for that. Uh, a lot of times if I get there at sundown, I'll uh, just watch the bees coming in. And if bees are all coming in to spend the night, now see, sometimes they spend the night when they're scouting spots. So that's still not a, not a done deal. 
but uh, then I'll start uh, counting between bees, right? As we get, you know, past after sunset. And uh, if I've seen 50, 60 bees go in that didn't come out, and, uh, and then I start counting, and I, I take down the trap when I can count to 20 between bees, right? So I, oh, another one flew in, starting at one, two, three, four. And then I know that there's gonna be some left, but then I hang another trap in the same location. They'll go in there and they'll either die or go back to their mother hive, hopefully. But so, uh, any questions so far? So now you've caught a swarm, you close it up, you bring it down. I, I bring it down, I hang another one in the same spot, and, uh, and, I, and it doesn't matter which side of the hive you put the entrance on either. So I have some where my entrance is over here, some where my entrance is over here. This is all void down here with no frames in the bottom, so it doesn't really matter. So then I get home, and the night, it's in the dark now, and I pull my truck up either, if I'm going to my, I have two different places where I put the swarms, because you never know what you're gonna get. They might be super frisky or whatever, and you might not want them in, you know, like in your main apiary. So I do, a, and mites and stuff like that. So I have a seclusion area that I keep them on pallets with other swarms that were caught. And I'll take this trap and I will set it right on the spot of the pallet where it's going to be installed into 10 frames. And I'll leave it there and I'll open the, open the gate. So that the next morning, they're still in this box, but they're gonna start flying out of this box in its new location. And again, because those are full sunlight spots, the ventilation is key. So, so if you didn't have uh, ventilation and uh, you know, you wouldn't want to overheat them because these are small entrances. They're, you know, like they're not like a normal, you know, wide. So, and I have various colors too, some darker, some lighter. So then later that day, that evening, maybe two days from now, I'm going to take that and I'm going to install it. When I open it up, the longer I wait, they're going to start drawing down those five frames. So these five frames that are in here, uh, they'll fill this up, but then they'll start drawing down underneath it, right? And that becomes a heck of a pain. And half the time, it's just like a little shape like that. I end up just tossing it, which is a shame. You know, like they work so hard. They use so much resources to draw the backs. That's why I like to do it sooner rather than later. Oh, I forgot to mention one other thing about, about my design. Uh, the strings, I just use electric state or electrical work staples, and I attach a parachute cord, and I tie it to the tree too, because if they're moving around, they're not going to be an attractive spot. So I know a lot of people don't have that, but I like doing that. I also have this, there's a little piece of reinforcement at the top in case the, to keep it from splitting on the, on the hole. But, uh, so then I open up the box, I smoke them a little bit, open up the box, and what I'm going to see is that that drawn comb that's in the middle is going to be totally full of resources, of nectar. So that's going to be totally full, and the queen's probably not going to be on it because it's full of, you know, just the resources. So I'm going to take, uh, you know, whatever order you want to do, they're going to be hanging from frames. So in that bottom underneath, so when you pull it out, there will be, you know, like a big clump hanging on the bottom of the frame. I'm going to put that in 10 frame equipment. So, and uh, I have my top screwed down, so I would have unscrewed and then popped the tops and put a new box on the pallet. Then, uh, then I, if they, if they drew it out, now sometimes it's, you know, like they've been there a while. They fully, those ones with the starter strip, they fully filled in a whole frame with comb that they made. Because then when they come, they are so primed. To make, to make wax. So, okay. so if it's full of wax, I'm going to give that to them. And then I might give them uh, all, uh, well, depending on the size of the, size of the cluster and whatever, uh, I, I give them a frame of brood, but open brood, as much open brood as you can, because open brood will always anchor a, anchor a swarm to a spot. They won't abscond if you put open brood. But I had, out of 12, one of mine did uh, abscond last year. And uh, so that does happen. But, you know, it's kind of rare, for me at least. 
So open uh, if you have a frame of brood, and it makes it more like a nuke than a package. So what you have here is a package. There's no, you know, like they just got there. The queen is ready to lay, you know, like usually it takes her a day or two to start, but, but uh, it's like a package. So if you put a frame of uncapped or maybe mixed, some uncapped, some capped, it's going to anchor them to that and, and it gives them a kickstart, right, from the get-go. And, and of ge genetics, you already know. Now what I do also is, because I don't know the condition of mites on this, so I don't usually treat them in the, in the swarm trap, but as soon as I get them in that equipment, after dark, I come back and I hit them with the oxalic acid. So sometimes if there's no brood, that's an ideal time to do it. Like the, the brood that I added, that's already treated my, my hives that are looking pretty good anyway. So I'm not worried about that, but I'm worried about the swarm. So I hit it with oxalic acid after dark. And I, the way I do it, I use the Mighty Vape, which is a great product, you should use it. But uh, I use the Mighty Vape and uh, it's just a golf, golf tee size hole in the, in the side or back of the pallet. So it's really easy, it's in a, you know, not invasive, just throw a cloth over the entrance and, and it takes just a short amount of time. And uh, so all of my lids on all of my hives have a hole in them for feeding. And so if I stuck these guys in here, they had their one drawn frame that I gave them because they filled it up with nectar and maybe one frame that they made themselves, the rest are all plastic foundations. So I'm gonna feed them on day one, right? I'm gonna throw a gallon of feed on there and, uh, and actually if I want them in a double deep, if it was a, cause I had a, a huge swarm last year, it, uh, didn't all fit into the swarm trap. It was hanging on the underside. I would guess it was probably 40,000 bees. But, uh, and I had to get a bucket. I filled a whole five gallon bucket plus a swarm trap full of bees. And uh, so that one, they, they were gonna start drawing both boxes right away. So I kept feeding, kept feeding. If, when you put that second box on, yeah. I don't consider swarms uh, a way of getting honey. I, I, I took zero honey from my swarms last year and I just, keep uh, building them. So, so let them build, give them sugar water and let them start building. They're gonna brood up really big, really fast, yeah. especially if you're feeding them. If, they're, if they have foragers going out, it'll be less fast, you know, so less coverage on the brood. So that's what I do. And uh, so far all of my swarms have made it. And then I had some questionable, I had a, I had a September swarm that's still alive. So mm. go explain that one. But, uh, and I, I normally pull down all my traps at the end of June, but, but uh, not, at, not at my house, so. All right, so uh, the last part is another alternative. So bees like the smell of bees. That's why you're rub, rubbing the slum gum. There's a bag of slum gum in the nail. Oh, I got one for each of you. Slum gum in the nail. Thank you. Slum gum in the nail. So you rub that on the inside of your traps to give them the smell of bees. But what if you have old equipment? You have die, die outs from the previous year. Like this thing, if you look inside, this was used probably four or five years. This was old equipment. And that's what makes it a great swarm trap. So you can use those old deeps. This is a simple addition to a trap. So all I do right here, there's a vent on the back and an entrance on the front, right? And I, uh, have about a, it's like a one by four, I guess, around and a piece of plywood on the bottom. And I put a deep on top of this box. So I take this box with the entrance, I put a deep here. And I, I always, uh, I don't even worry about, they like it dark, but I just use masking tape. I always have masking, I buy, I buy a dozen rolls at the beginning of the season. So you can see masking tape from last year already on this one. So I throw my deep on there, I masking tape it. Then a lot of times I just use a piece of plywood for the, you know, for the lid. I nothing, nothing fancy, nothing special. I uh, make sure if there's a gap, I'm going to put a little masking tape there and a strap around it. And I put this on, uh, I have old tree stands because I'm a big deer hunter. And I take old tree stands and I uh, cut the seed off and I weld them so they don't fold anymore. And those are, those are my, uh, for holding this kind. I have four of these bottoms, so I actually do run some of these. And 
the bigger the swarm traps, this one's a little bigger than this one, because even though they're the same height, this one's a seven frame, this one's a five frame. And then this one has a deep, but then the space in the bottom makes it like a deep and a shallow. So uh, Seely, the big bee researcher said a little, I think it's like 40 liters, a little bit more than a deep. And uh, this one catches the biggest swarms usually. This was a pretty huge, this was all seven frames were full when I, when I realized I had bees in it last year. But they, they went a little longer because it was in my yard. I was a Hail Mary, just I took the frames that this one, I didn't even have any uh, brown brood comb. I just threw old blank frames that I had scraped off from this, from these dead outs, that old equipment that had been sitting outside for five years. And the bees loved it, right? So. What is the essential oil in here? There is no essential it's, this oil. This is just slum That's gum? the bees. It smells so good. Now it you're, like on my hands, I have some lemongrass oil. Oh, okay. Maybe. So you might be smelling that Maybe. in here. So, so you guys didn't smell, this is, did you smell this? No, no. no it that's work. that's the that's smells like chocolate. Yeah, it does yeah. it. When it, when I'm when I'm yeah. doing it, it smells like chocolate. That's lemongrass oil. And the swarm commander, I have like a little toolbox that I use for working bees. I keep my swarm commander bottle in there, and every time I go out and work bees, there'd be 40, 40 bees on that swarm commander. They love this stuff, you know. But people are saying swarm rustler is pretty good. Th these are like. These went up when I first started buying these. These were like 13, now they're up to 20. But yeah, I cut them in four, so it's five bucks each, and they last all season. That's the beauty of it. Okay. So, but the problem is you take down one hive or one trap and you put up another. So now you have the one with the this stuff yeah. in it. Oh. Yeah, at home. But then the next time you get one, you're recycling it out. So, and uh, the most I've caught on the same tree is three in a year. And one was, I pulled the trap, and a day later, they said another swarm came, that same location. And, and all, of the, all of the traps had different entrances going different ways, and I oh. didn't bother move, moving stuff, and they didn't mind. So. Huh. So are you oh, being good... strategic about that? Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, yeah. Are you being strategic about where you're placing these? Do you, are you saying, oh, there's a large beekeeper over here, and I'll try and place my... Well, I'm in rural areas by, you know, woods, mixed woods, farmer fields, and there's like the orchards, so there's beekeepers around. But uh, actually, two of my best locations, I think there's bee trees nearby because they're not well behaved. Like uh, I have some kind of frisky swarms that I catch from these two locations. Yeah. One that's downright mean, but they're the best honey producers, you know, like, oh, yeah. so they, they're, I have to fully fully suit up, make sure there's like, you know, like they get me on the wrist anywhere they can get me, but they are the biggest honey producers. And I know some people are watching are like, they're Africanized. We're in Michigan. I, we don't really have a problem that way, but they're probably meaner genetics. And I did try the, one of my meanest hives last year. I split it three ways, right? I'm like, I'm going to split this down to nothing and kill the queen and make sure they all make new queens. They're all, all of their offspring were a little frisky too. Yeah. So, yeah, you see. can add a you can add a queen. That's yeah, good. yeah. But that but they have good genetics. They're yeah. I've had that that hive that I've had now its offspring, but I had it for three years. Yeah. I'm like ah, three years honey producer. Yeah. You know, never wants you to come into it, but you know, yeah, they take care of themselves. Hopefully, you eventually it'll calm down from the other drones. All right. Any questions? Any other questions? What percentage of um fifty percent? So I. Uh, I would say 50% is the average, and I didn't get quite 50% because I had more than one trap at certain locations. Okay. But last year I had one location with two, and cool. or two locations with two, and I caught 12 out of 24 or so. So it's all set up for, for deep brood, or for deep pots, so you can just swap it all out. Yeah, I, I, all my brood chambers are deeps. And you mentioned earlier, end of April, beginning of May is is when they'll start moving in, so they'll get down before that. Yeah, I've never I've never caught one in April, but when you're trapping in April, you're often trapping people like who are trying to make early splits, so trying to get them to brood up early, okay. like oh. we were talking about earlier, yeah. or absconded packages. So yeah. you might be kept catching oh. new beekeepers absconded packages. I was just packages. thinking that. I was like, I know where my bees went. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every year. Well, some people are funny about it. Some people are, uh, 
Like, and if someone came up to me and said, hey, I saw mine swarm off and come to your trap, I'd be like, yeah, go ahead, we'll unload it. I want all my equipment back, of course, but, you know, like, I'm not trying, but I, we all lose swarms to other people. That's, you know, and it's not always mismanagement. Sometimes they're going to do what they're going to do, you know, like, there's no stopping them to hide from swarming sometimes, but. Any other questions? I find the screw top lids just for security when you're transporting them. Yeah. So like once I have this closed, because see these are all, all of these are closed and it's down on the board. So it's not going to come up, right? And uh, so then I'm closed, it's screwed shut. I could, like the people will often come out and look and oh, I can see them in there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. they're in there. So, uh, it, like roughly an inch on the, the hole? Uh, that's a seven eighths. Seven eighths? I, do an, I do one inch too. A lot. Okay. I think one inch is what most people do. Okay. I just have a really nice hole, seven eighths hole bit. But. That must be pretty tricky getting that down once once it's oh. loaded. No, so it's, it's not. Are you using it's a still, belt or? you got to imagine a package. So, so, even though they brought in maybe a pound or two of resources, and then you know, usually it's three pounds of bees, so you're only adding four pounds to it. This one's super light, so feel it's it's pretty light. <laughs> well, this, this, that, this is what maneuvering it with. Well, the see, see this, I could get my middle finger in the hole, right? Okay. So I'm actually going like this down the thing, getting it off the. That's why I say getting it off the nail, because then you're on a ladder and you have to. You have to grab it with two hands, so that's the that's the trickiest part. But I often do my ladder at an extreme angle, so I'm more standing, you know, so it's not like tippy that way. But I know a lot of people are going to say ladder safety. I'm going to try to post this on YouTube. So. <laughs> but uh, all right, it's fun stuff though. Yeah. Do you have success with a seven verse five or same? Well, this is the only one I have like this, and it did catch. Last year I used, I, I got the equipment last spring and I, I said, well, I'm not going to waste it, you know, so, and it was all, you know, like, it's got a lot of propose Oh, there's the other screw. Oh, I was missing a screw. But, yeah, so, it worked good. Old equipment is the best. So, you don't know if it's the space or the fact that it was really used? This is a little bit bigger. This would be probably comparable in size to this one with the deep on top of it because it's wider. It's a seven frame, same height. But... So, so what, it's nine and five eighths for a, a frame. This is, usually I go like 18 inches, but it does, depends. This is pallet wood. You can see that this is pallet wood and heat treated, of course. But, uh, you know, if it's easier to make it 17 inches just because of the cuts, I'll do that. I have various sizes, you know. So the netting inside is just to keep rodents out? Yep. The metal. And birds. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, like this one doesn't have a, a hinged closure and I just uh, when I went up I just stapled a piece of uh, hardware cloth there mm -hmm. I'm going to stop recording